Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, welcome to another video. Um, in this channel, this video, I'll be talking about um, one of the possible ways we can get registered with the GDC as registered dentist. But this route will be without taking any exams with the GDC or the LDS. So stay tuned and thanks for coming back to the channel. Um, I'll start the video. So in this video, I'll be talking about the course that everyone been talking about uh, from the Yuklan University or University of Central Langshire. This course it's called BDS or Bachelor in Dental Surgery for International Students. Um, this course is only made for international students graduated from overseas country outside the European Union or the UK. Um, so they can retake the fourth and the fifth year of their undergrad in the UK and that allows them to obtain a BDS degree from a dental university in the UK, a registered dentist in the UK with the GDC without taking any exams. I'll talk about the duration of the course, the entry requirements and the fees talk about how we can get through it, um, is it a good option or not, and we'll take it from there. Stay tuned and stay up to date. So as I mentioned, this course it's called BDS in Dental Surgery for International Students. The length of the course is 18 months, starting from March of each year. So applications will be from March the previous year and then there'll be selection criteria. This course is gonna be at University of Central Langshire, which is a university located in Preston. It's an area in the northwest of England near Manchester. They have a big university and big college for dentistry, so it's well known. This course is gonna be run by the university alongside the students of their own um, from the undergrad to cover the fourth and the fifth year of the undergraduation. This course is running now with a collaboration with My Dentist. My Dentist is a big company and practice owners in the UK. This company owns about 550 to 600 practices all over the UK. So they have this kind of agreement with the university where My Dentist can give any student who hold an offer from the university to study this course of a grant or like a scholarship of £12,000 which will be taken off the tuition fees or you can pay it up front and also my dentist offer the students accepted for this course another twelve grand to be paid to them when they work as private hygienists in one of their practices while they are doing the course. So during your study, you'll be working in a dental practice run by my dentist and my dentist will pay you for this period another 12 grand. So that's 24 grand already taken off the final fees. So this course only available for the international students who hold different nationality than the UK or European nationality. UK citizens, as mentioned on the website now, are eligible to apply if they graduated from a university outside the European Union and they are not residents in the UK. Resident in the UK means that you don't live in the UK or you haven't lived in the UK for the previous three years. So you lived overseas for the previous three years, even though you have and hold a British passport but you can apply if you graduated from an overseas um, university, like somewhere in the Middle East or um, anywhere, Pakistan or India. Uh, the fees of this course is now £75,000. That will be paid in two uh, installments, uh, 37 and a half grand for the first uh, part, which is half year. And then the other 37 and a half grand will be paid for the second part, which is the second year to cover the whole tuition fees. And as I mentioned, if my dentist offer that incentive, which is 24 grand in total, then you can um, have it, but you are obliged to stay with my dentist and work with them upon graduation. They will offer you a place at one of their practices. You can do your VTE or PLVE, uh, program as part of your first NHS year um, so it's all gonna be ready and available for you to work so it's not a bad deal so I think everyone should get advantage of it so what are the entry requirements entry requirements are five the first one is a BDS degree as I said from overseas country should be equivalent to a BDS degree in the UK so may ask you for an NAREC statement 
or ENIC. So you submit it online, you have that comparability statement and you submit it with your applications. Even though it's not mentioned, they may just need your certificate translated and uh, certified. So they take it as a proof. The second thing is English requirement. If we graduated from a country where English is not the first language, they will ask you for a test to prove your um, efficiency in English. The tests you can take is IELTS, and the required score for IELTS, I think it's academic, they didn't mention it, they may accept UKVI, but the required score for either, I think it's uh, 7, and not less than 7 in each part. It's a bit tricky, and trickier than the GDC, which even makes it more challenging to get to the course. Um, I think people would think about this uh, route as to get away from doing the ORE, or doing the IELTS, but in this course they ask for higher. There is other um, language tests you can take for this specific university like TOEFL or ESOLS. They've got different uh, marks and grading, so it's all available on the university website. You can read through it and uh, check exactly what's needed. And the third requirement, uh, they said we need not less than 600 hours of clinical training or clinical treatments on patients postgraduate and this should be done um, within the last five years and should be done after your graduation so they won't accept any proof of um, clinical skills or training uh, during your undergrad the reference you need is from practice owner um, a consultant someone who supervised you directly they need to write it in clear that you covered this number of hours, you delivered this sort of treatments, and then at the end they should date it within three months uh, from submitting your application. They should stamp it and they should sign it. And they may contact them on email, so that's also a very important requirement. The fourth requirement is a certificate of good standing, which is something similar to the GDC requirement. You get it from your uh, general dental council in the country you've been practicing dentistry in uh, the latest. So uh, you go to the council, you ask for this uh, certificate of good standing, and it should be dated within three months uh, from submitting your application, not longer than that because they may ask you for another one if there is a change in the name they need affidavit and the final requirement will be to uh, be assessed on an assessment entry exam which will be taken in the uk at the campus in preston um, in manchester so this exam will be composed of two parts part one which is written exam and the second part is oskies i'll talk about um, each part just how to prepare maybe there's not uh, enough guidance on their website on what to do they said it's just like as what the GDC uh, fitness to practice and the curriculum need dental student to be doing at their fourth year so let's see what we can do so for the written exam written exam will be of 100 questions multiple questions MCQs will be done at their campus in Preston so you have to be in the UK um, it will be done in a computer lab, so you take the exam on a computer just like the ORE. When you take the exam, uh, you've got only two hours to complete. When you finish, they may ask you to wait until all other students finish the exam, so there won't be any question circulations and it will be fair for everyone. The second part of the exam is the OSCEs. OSCEs is, again, I think similar to the ORE. There's not enough guidance. They mentioned there will be eight stations. Uh, five minutes length each and two minutes for you to read the scenario before you enter the room. When you enter the room, there will be a task for you to take either to uh, deliver a treatment plan, make a diagnosis, take a medical history, dental history, uh, perform something like suturing, um, show how to use a survey. So something t similar to the ORE. So eight stations, five minutes each and two minutes before each station to read the scenario. They mentioned there will be two rest stations and there will be two long stations. The two long stations, each one of them will be 30 minutes and five minutes to read the scenario before you enter the room. So that maybe will be similar to the dental treatment planning or the unseen cases in the LDS. I'm not really sure. Um, we may need to ask and understand, but this is like really what both these parts are about. I think upon finishing and completing these two exams, the written and the OSCEs, 
you'll be ranked and then they will choose the students with the higher rank and then co contact them to offer them placement at the university and get the paperwork ready. You need to have the occupational health department uh, approval, which is like having some blood tests to prove that you're vaccinated against hep B, um, no HIV or anything. And if you need a booster, they will give it to you before you start. They will ask you for a DBS check, which is like police check as well. So that's also part of the process. But once we get the offer, so at the end, this course, it's not a bad option considering the money and the support we can get from my dentist. At the end, we'll be paying about 51 grand on tuition fees. On top of that, we need to pay something for uh, living. So we need about eight to 10 grand a year. So we're looking in total about 70. But at the end, you'll be qualified dentist. You will guarantee a job with my dentist. Uh, your training and the PLVE job is secured. Your first NHS job is secured. So you may get the first in the first year of working as a dentist with my dentist, you may hit 50 to 70 grand, which means that you covered and you already earned back what you paid for this course. It is a good option for anyone who's struggling with the ORE, the LDS, or they've been away from dentistry for a while and they want to get a new qualification in the UK. I don't think it's a bad option. We can read more about it on the university website. I'll put it here on the video and I'll put it down in the description so you can read and go through the entry requirements if you've got questions ask me I'll try my best to answer but again I'm not very sure I hope you find this video interesting and you like it uh, please if you like the content of the channel and the videos I'm posting uh, please share subscribe and like uh, share it with your friends who's interested to come to the UK I hope I'm giving you values and I'll keep doing so i'll post more videos in the future if you've got any ideas any specific things you want me to cover please leave it in the comments and i look forward to see you again take care